It's an age old tradition, fishermen all over the world. Before you set your net out, you always bless your net for a good catch and safe return to port. And this is the business end of the net right here, right? The cod end where all the fish will end up. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is just kiss the tail bag. Don't worry, it gets washed every day. This couple of weeks, we've been sending kids out on the water as part of the Marine Science Legacy Program for the um, Urbana Oyster Festival Foundation. When the kids are out on the water, they're learning about the bay, they're learning about crabs, oysters, um, the fish, the watershed, and things that will help the kids understand how to preserve the bay. Um, the whole program is to bring marine science into the schools and to help preserve what we've got here. And this is such a historic waterfront and such a great place for the kids to, to learn. This is a, a paper shell or a buckram and this is a crab that's already shed and the, the shell is just started to harden back up. It's not a hard crab. <laughs> It's not a soft crab. It's what they call a paper shell. None of this would be possible without the support of the Oyster Festival Foundation. The Oyster Festival arranges to pay for the uh, school kids to go out, the Middlesex Public Schools to go out. The town of Urbana provides the dockage for the Bee Home and Clark for a couple of weeks and for two weeks we've got Middlesex kids on the water. And it gives the opportunity for private schools to go out as well. A field guide and a fish key. And you can research your fish and maybe if you can get a common name, scientific name, habitat, you know, we'll have fish reports. You know, I always try in whatever I'm teaching, whether it be environmental science or marine science, to make it real and make the book come alive. And uh, you can do that to an extent with uh, showing various DVDs or movies that can, can emphasize what you're doing. But there's nothing better than getting them out into the field. We can actually get them out right into it and they can get down and dirty and uh, really, you know, touch the fish and learn about them and uh, see what's really here, not just from looking at it in a textbook or researching a species on the internet. You know, I mean, several of them have just said to me, you know, can we do this every class? In our little bucket here, we have the hog choker, which is the smaller ones. They are about six to eight inches long. Their scientific name is the Trinectus maculatus. Yep. Both of these fish, the summer flounder and the hog choker, they spend their life um, living on the bottom. So what do we call it when an organism changes to suit its environment? Adaptation. Yeah, it's an adaptation of these fish. That's exactly right. And if you look at them closely, the hog choker, if you look at his eyes, his eyes are on, some, on the right side of his body. He's called a right-handed hog choker is the, the common name. Where the summer flounder, the eyes are on the left. They get it over to the kids in a way that they can understand uh, at their level at which they can understand. And uh, I mean, I just can't say enough about the organization itself. They all love it. Um, a lot of kids at the end of the day, that was so much fun. This is the funnest field trip I ever had. So uh, if you have one or two say that, it was well worth the trip. Bye bye. Um, this is a black drum. The scientific name is um, Pagonius chromis, and it's a bottom feeder.